brain activity is basically just electricity. So measures the magnetic fields that are generated by brain activity inside your head. It's one of the few ways we have to get access into the internal workings of your mind. Lock the sensors, yeah. Okay, we're going to play you a sentence and we're going to ask you to covertly repeat it. That is, imagine saying it covertly. Okay. The MEG has a built-in helmet of 160 magnetic field detectors that scan and record the subject's brain waves every time she imagines a given word. The book is next to the glass. The MEGs are looking for a signal given off by neurons that's incredibly tiny, a field that's a thousand times smaller than a refrigerator magnet. Every millisecond, that is every thousandth of a second, we're recording from the entire head, from all 160 channels. It's an enormous amount of information that we then have to sift through to make sense of. Their goal is to isolate clear efference copies for every word imagined by the subject. You don't just know some word and its sequence of sounds. All the information associated with that concept suddenly comes up. Imagine yourself saying the word cat. Cat, cat. You had a cat called Fluffy when you were a kid that threw up a lot on your bed, or you hate cats, you love cats. So it's not a needle in a haystack. It's like a needle in 10,000 haystacks. With each word that Popol deciphers. Okay, keep going. We grow closer to a future where advanced mind scanners could lay bare our innermost thoughts. It will redefine doctor-patient relationships. It will help redefine lawyer-client relationships. It will certainly have an impact in criminal justice investigations. Imagine that you're going to the airport. TSA could figure out whether you are a terrorist or not. And it shouldn't be the case that TSA, by default, gets access to our thoughts. It would only be that people who want to participate in this sort of accelerated screening can opt into it.